Welcome to another edition of your Christian News Connection, and it's so happy to have with us Brian Campbell, a um, musician, artist, traveling, does everything. <laughs> I know he's on the road, but he's <laughs> he's home, and it's great to spend some minutes uh, with him today. Brian, thank you for giving us some of your time. And this particular praise song, Speak, speak to us about that, how the Lord spoke yeah. to you. What? Give us, what's the line? Oh, give us the story behind Speak. Yeah, no, thanks for having me on too, Jim. Um, you know, we we wrote that song a few years back. I wrote it with a, a colleague of mine, Tori Harris. She's a worship leader. She's based in Texas now. But um, we were down in Tennessee, and we were writing, and we'd written some other stuff for her projects in the past, and, and so we were just, just kind of writing uh, some worship and wanting to, to write from a place of, of what we were experiencing and, and where where we were in the moment. And um, so we just started to pray and, and had got coffee in the morning and then just sat down and, and started to write and, and just asked God, would you, would you speak to us today? And as we, we both had kind of had the expectation that God was going to speak something new. Um, that you, Usually when we're asking God to speak, we're, we're thinking, God, would you speak something that I've never heard before, implying that I've never, um, it's something new that you've never said before. Hmm. But so often, um, and and where where it happened with this song, it, it was it was actually pulling us back to this reality that that God has spoken things that um, we actually need to listen to. We need to hear from Him uh, what He's already speaking, and and it, that truth just really uh, it, it was like God's presence just filled the room, and it just it overwhelmed both of us. This reality that God was was speaking to us, and it wasn't that. He had stopped speaking at any point. It was, it was that um, our ears just needed to tune to what he yeah. he had to say, and um, and so that was the inspiration for that song, and and that that became that prayer that God would you speak and and um, that you'd remind me of of that first moment mm. that I heard your voice, that that face to face encounter, that Penuel moment. Um, God, would you bring me back to that and. And then from that place would my, my heart, my mind, my life be calibrated to what you want mm. to speak to me. Absolutely. Wow. What a great story that is. So bring me up to date about your ministry. What's been going on and uh, where are you headed for? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we toured for um, a number of years and, and it was like God just kind of had us on these laps around the world as a team. And, and we were in we were doing stuff in the States. And then uh, we did a lot actually in Europe and then in, in New Zealand, Australia, and um, that was probably six or seven years. And then um, in 2015, we had a little baby, mm. and so so our son is is five now, and uh, and that just started this whole season of having kids. And so we just had our third one a couple months back. Um, mm. But but yeah, it's really really recently, Jim. It seems like God is, is starting to lead into uh, some some new things, and so we're starting to explore that. We've always had a real connection and a heart for New Zealand, and I think um, I think we're we're starting to uh, position things to begin to move in that direction. So um, I think uh, we're we're just starting to walk this out. But um, we've we've just said, God, we're going to continue to say yes to you as long as you keep opening the doors, mm-hmm. and um, and we'll just we'll see where it's going. And part of the yeah. doors have just continued to open to move to New Zealand. So that's that's kind of where we're at at the moment. Brian Campbell's our guest today. Brian, uh, if you can, uh, with the bring back, we just want to ask you this. In the years you've been touring and playing God's music and his encouragement, can you share a, a little story with us where somebody came up to you, no name, just said, wow, you know what? That particular song spoke to me, and this is what it means to me. Uh, an encouraging glory story, if you can? Sure. I mean, you know, a lot of times those have been things where I, I, I've actually probably experienced them mm-hmm. just only everyone else, too. And there was a, a, a song that that I, I wrote with a, a friend from Cleveland, actually. He's a worship pastor in Cleveland, and, and it was called The Spear Kingdom Come. And that song, it was just a prayer. It was, Let Faith Rise in Me. Mm. Open my eyes to see what you see, and um, that that prayer of just that you'd let let faith rise, and mm. and that corporate kind of just prayer that God among us, not just in me personally, but among us, that you let faith rise. Um, and there's just been 
just some really neat uh, moments in worship with that song. Mm -hmm. Uh, We ended up translating it into a couple different languages. So we, I remember being in Paris and we were singing that song just, and it's a, it's just a simple chorus, you know, Uh but um, just hearing people sing it in in Paris or Belgium, like when we did it in French and, Mm -hmm. and how it would connect with people. Um, it was really humbling because the, the words are so simple. Anybody could have written the words, you know, yeah. but it just seeing what God was doing in the midst of those times has mm-hmm. been really cool. And, and every time that's happened, it's, it's kind of expanded my view personally mm-hmm. to see that in the global body of Christ and that um, just when, when uh, a prayer or worship starts to rise among God's people everywhere, mm-hmm. there's something where it joins with, with uh, the worship that's going on in heaven too, and um, just that, how that transcends time and place and what God's doing there is, is just a really neat thing. Well, that's interesting when you say that uh, you're talking about overseas. You know, you heard years ago that people from overseas would come over to minister to us, and, mm. uh, you know, you hear that all the time. Let me ask you, what's it like when you go to New Zealand, wherever you even Paris? I mean, spreading God's Word. Uh, bring us a, what 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 happens? Yeah, you know, it made me think when you said that too. Um, the, uh, the the guy who founded YWAM, he had this vision yeah. of these, these waves that mm-hmm. went across the world, the world and hit the coast of different nations, and the, and the waves would come back and forth. And there's so much of that. There's like a cross pollination that we receive so much more than what we give. I feel like a lot of times, and um, just being in a, a posture to receive, um, even as we're ministering and serving, but. Um, so I think that really happens anytime there's cross-cultural ministry that's going on. Um, there's the opportunity to to give, but also to receive receive from people. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I think I think that's that's been one of the coolest things about it, just to see, uh, you know, what what God's doing in different times or in the same mm-hmm. time, but in different places around mm-hmm. the world it can be so different, but so complementary to. Um, it's just been a really, really amazing thing and, and just a real privilege to be part of it. You know, you talked about New Zealand as a possibility, and I've heard things, you know, people moving overseas and everything. But, I, you know, when you hear about New Zealand, like, yeah, we're here. We just, like, we're here. They don't, uh, right. you don't hear anything that much about them because it must be a, a, a great place and the people. Uh, tell us a little <laughs> bit about that. Yeah. Tell us a bit about New Zealand. Yeah, what you know, Jim? What what really struck me about the times? Like there was about uh, three or four years where I was, I was going every six to twelve months, and I was back in New Zealand, mm-hmm. Australia area, and so it was like every it was really fresh in my mind. And um, what what I found that was so amazing about what's going on there is um, just there. And this was this was back in twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen. Mm-hmm. Um, they they're just really on the ball in terms of what it means to uh, be reconciled to each other and and their mystery of reconciliation mm-hmm. and 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 they don't they don't say that they've got it you know there's a real history there of there's a native a high a big uh, indigenous population in New Zealand and then there's a lot of people from the UK there was a lot of uh, things that were done really right in that mm-hmm. and then there were things that were really done wrong in that. But what's what's amazing is I feel like they're about 15 to 20 years ahead of most of us around the world in terms of what it looks like to be reconciled in racial reconciliation, mm-hmm. but, but even on a deeper level, just on a spiritual reconciliation, what that looks like. And, and so the first time that I ever went there, I was I remember we were in worship and it was just a worship night, you know, like mm-hmm. what you, you, you'd be in on like a, a Sunday night service right. or something like that. And this guy just breaks into this Maori haka which is a war dance. It's like a, a really, uh, yeah, if you've ever seen the All Blacks play in rugby, they do this war chant before um, mm. their their games, and, and everybody's out there, and it's this powerful thing. It's a really jarring thing, mm. and when this guy did it, like the air left the room. It was, it was just like, what? Wow. You know, it was not a, a smooth transition thing, <laughs> but it was a really powerful thing, and it nice. was like, it was a God-breathed moment, and it kind of started my heart on this this whole journey of what is this what's going on mm-hmm. here just to see kind of what what okay. god's doing that that he really uh the simple the simple thing about it is god's got a place for everybody at yeah. the table 
Wow. Um, and he, he really loves people for who they are. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, that, that means that, you know, it's, it's a, it's a really diverse area. You know, we see a lot of different, different looking ways of worship around the table that are all really pleasing to God when Jesus is, is proclaimed and he's crowned in the midst of it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I just, yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious. I want to, I want to keep seeing what God is doing there. And First of all, I thank you for giving us some of your time today, uh, Brian Campbell. Yeah, thanks, Jim. And uh, we're just going to close out praise song here on The Lights 95.9. Speak, speak again And I'll turn my ear and listen In the quiet I remember Your promise is fulfilled so I will wait and I'll be still To you I come and you I rest Let the sound of heaven echo through my wilderness To come again to the end of all I am Leaves a place for you to speak Word made flesh Word took on sin Word that made me whole Remind my heart of when I first heard the lover of my soul Hear your beckoning In every season Teach me how to hear Your voice Speak God speak.